Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm here with Shannon Purser for Meet Your Emmy nominee. Hi. Hi, Shannon. <laughs> Congratulations. This is your first Emmy nomination. Thank you. Yeah, it's hopefully hopefully just the first, but it's incredible, yeah. You play Bart Pollins in mm -hmm. Stranger Things. So uh, let's talk about how you found out about your Emmy nomination. Did you know that they were submitting you? Um, no, no, I had <laughs> no. I mean, I had no idea actually. I knew that the show was was going to be submitted, and that and I was not surprised at all to see that it got the amount of nominations that it got because it's just so beautifully made and well done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little biased, obviously, but <laughs> okay. um, yeah, no, did not know they were submitting me. And I remember I was on a plane to Vancouver to do season two of Riverdale uh -huh. um, when they announced it. And so the plane landed and I turned on my phone and it just was like blowing up. And wow. I had no idea what was going on you until just, I got a phone call and they were like, you got nominated and I freaked wow. out. That's yeah. so awesome. So have you, have you gotten any interesting reactions from fans, from other actors, um, you know, any surprising, surprising shout outs from people? I don't know. I mean, I think one of the things that's been like most encouraging to me is uh, David Harbour, who's a hopper in Stranger Things, whom yeah. I love and is just this wonderful human being and actor, um, has said some very kind things to me about it and just Aww. congratulating me for it. And I'm also so glad that he was nominated as well because I think he was absolutely brilliant in that show. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've had him on a couple of times for oh, your yes. nominees I'm, as well. I love him so much. Yeah, he's great. Um, did you spend any time at Comic-Con this year? Were you down Yeah, there I was there for or? like one day, which uh -huh. was really fun. Um, basically, the Deffer brothers had this idea to bring me in and surprise the rest of the cast when they were doing the Stranger Things panel for season oh, two. Oh, that's hilarious. So, yeah, they got to, like, the <laughs> Q&A part of... Of, um, of the panel and I like just popped up and everybody freaked out because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be there and it was like sworn to secrecy and um, yeah that was a lot of fun. Oh wow okay so let's talk a little bit about the cultural phenomenon that is Barb. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so that like this was kind of your first big acting gig. Yeah. And uh, so you came in you saw the script it looked really like a like a really fun kind of special show. Yeah. And then, you know, you film the show, and we'll, I would love to talk to you more about this, but I want to get to the point where how did you discover that Barb was, like, beyond just a character on the show? It was so weird, and <laughs> it I feel like it happened, like, slowly, but also when I look back at it, it all really happened over a couple weeks. Um, wow. That the show had come out, and it was starting to get really positive reviews, which I was so happy about. Um, but yeah, no, I, I never expected that anybody would really notice me, much less care about my character <laughs> at all. Um, I mean, it is pretty wild to have been there for such a short amount of time and to have made the impact that the character did. And yeah, I just remember all these notifications like Twitter and Instagram blowing up and that hashtag justice for Barb started like trending <laughs> on Twitter, which was so weird. And it's been a wild ride, for sure. Do you feel kind of a kinship with Millie Bobby Brown? Because one of the things I noticed when watching the final episode of Stranger Things is I was like, well, the kids are so excited that they have their friend back, but what about Eleven? <laughs> they were right. like, oh, some stuff happened. We had a new friend, but everything's great. You know? I know. And I was like, hey, justice for Eleven. Come right. on. I know. It is kind of <laughs> funny how that worked out. And I think... I think Mike is definitely devastated about about Eleven being gone. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe it's just because this all happened such a short amount of time. And mm -hmm. I think all the other kids were still like a little suspicious of her. But I think Mike is definitely the one who really felt it right. when Eleven was gone. And maybe Barb and Eleven in season two, you're going to kind of see more of like the aftermath of what happens when yeah. these characters are gone. I think so too. I mean, the brothers have promised that there will be justice for Barb in season two. <laughs> I love that. So um, <laughs> Maybe we'll your dad see. will come to town. <laughs> right? I know. Like, where is he? Maybe Barb has like a very troubled home life like right. we don't know her mom doesn't seem to care that she's like gone so that, that 
typo as well. Well, you know, I mean, the thing that that really connected me to Barb is that there was a kid in my elementary school who was like a redheaded girl with glasses mm -hmm. who her favorite color was pink, you know, and she was like <laughs> kind of this pink and red thing. Yep. And I, I was just like, I feel like maybe this is like a very universal person who exists, you know, in, in all of our childhood. <laughs> maybe there's just that weird redhead. I don't know. <laughs> Did you wear a lot of pink when you were a little kid? Um, maybe. I don't know. I always go back to like my middle school days when I was deep in my emo phase. So oh, at nice. that point in my so life, pink was gothy? definitely not part of my wardrobe. Yes. I'm like, I like this. Give me like studded belts and plaid mini skirts and stuff. And it was. You were way cooler. Than it was Barb. really bad, but <laughs> I enjoyed it at the time. <laughs> so are you a fan of 80s movies? Absolutely. I love. I mean, I think 80s were probably arguably the best decade for, for film. Definitely the best decade for kids in film, too. Yeah, like absolutely. Really started to the see, Goonies like... The Goonies and yeah. Stand By Me, and it's just so good. Yeah. What are some of your favorite kind of, like, 80s, like, tropes? Like, I love like the young moms who are like constantly smoking and stressed out. Right, like, I'm like, is this best, a, like, I think about that all the time because <laughs> I'm watching Twin Peaks right now, the original, mm -hmm. and I'm like, were teenagers just allowed to smoke in school and nobody <laughs> cared at all? Like, Maybe, I, don't I don't know, know. <laughs> like because everybody seems to be like chain smoking in the 80s. I do, um, I have like really dark memories because I'm, I'm older than you, but younger than like, being an 80s teenager. Yeah. But I do remember that there maybe is a smoking section. I think like when I lived in Virginia in the South, there might have been a smoking section for kids in high school. Wow. I seem to remember That's that. That's so funny. Cause yeah. That and that would have been the never 90s, happened now. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do love that one. I also love like, I just love the hair so much. Yeah. You know, you wonder what, what these people were thinking and <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I love macrame. I like mm -hmm. that macrame was a thing. It's like more of a 70s thing, but like if you want to show like kind of like a, a certain class of person, like they would still have macrame in their house. Absolutely. And also I think just the clothes, you know, people hate on mom jeans a lot, but they're really comfortable. And, and like, back. I was, I was all about it. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit about like kind of the, uh, the acting process because you, this is a pretty juicy role. I can see why you got Emmy nominated because you get to be, yeah. you get to do like the the kind of outcast thing, but then you get to have this like wonderful like horror movie scene. Yeah, which was so much fun. Um, I mean, yeah, Stranger Things really is kind of everything that I love about TV. You know, I love obviously the 80s and I love science fiction and horror and it was this really beautiful kind of medley of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there really wasn't a lot on the page for Barb, you know? I think it was just like, Barb, bookish and nerdy. And like, that was like all I had to go on, really. Mm -hmm. um, and that says a lot, obviously, about the Duffer Brothers and Sean Levy, who directed, and they were incredible. Um, but yeah, I think most of the time, I really kind of just drew from my own high school experience. I'm a fairly oh. awkward and introverted person, so <laughs> I definitely kind of relate to Barb in a lot of ways and I've definitely been a third wheel at, at too many parties so that that wasn't a stretch yes. for me. Yeah that yeah. is a very identifiable moment. Yep when you're just sitting there and you're like <laughs> I don't want to be here at all and yeah <laughs> it was very real. <laughs> Did you look at any past performances of actresses from like the 80s or uh, or were you or were are the Duffer Brothers more about kind of pulling a performance out of you specifically. Yeah, I don't think I ever intentionally drew from other actors, you know, from the 80s, but um, I mean, I I do love Molly Ringwald a lot and, and everything that she does. Um, and I guess like as a redhead, I especially, I was like, sure. I, I could be Molly Ringwald. Like, she's incredible. <laughs> um, and I do think there are kind of some similarities there. It is interesting how, like, even the style of acting was very particular in the 80s, too. Like, there are subtle differences if you if you look hard enough between how a lot of the acting was done in the 80s versus now. Oh, what did you um, notice? Like, especially, like, in relation to Molly Ringwald, who probably is somebody who you can really study all the different emotional ranges yeah. because her character go, her character is always super emotional. Like, did you notice any like differences in how, how she reacts to things as opposed to like kind of how people are today? Yeah, I mean, I think there's 
there was this really endearing and charming realism to her. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the thing about Barb is that I feel like she could have been a very obnoxious character, you know, always like being like the Debbie Downer, like, I don't want to be at this party, like whining. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was, it was my first job and I was so incredibly psyched to be there that I'm like, I'm going to put my heart and soul into this character, even if I only have like 10 lines total. And <laughs> that's what I did. That's awesome. tried to. <laughs> what was it like filming the, uh, being dragged into the, uh, the other world? Oh, it's so the much upside fun. down. The upside down. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was amazing. That was actually my last day, um, shooting. But it was so eventful. I remember, like, I had so many bruises all over <laughs> at the end of the day because I did try to do most of my stunts. Nice. Um, and they weren't, like, super intensive, but mm -hmm. I got, like, you, had to you get know, kind like, of dragged down, down and, yeah. like, fell back onto, like, a, a mattress or whatever. Um, but, no, it was so much fun. It was really gross. There was, like, slime <laughs> and glycerin everywhere. I had to do, like, ten takes of the very beginning where I'm coughing up, like, slime, which was oh, actually no. baby food. And it was oh, disgusting. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I had to, like, change out of those slimy clothes, put the harness on, and then change back into the gross slimy clothes. And it was not fun. But I would absolutely do it all over again <laughs> in a heartbeat, for sure. We had um, Sean Levy in here before, yes. and he was he was talking a little bit about um, the SAG Awards when uh, they, you guys won for the best yes. cast, <laughs> and the kind of weird thing that happened where Winona Ryder oh my became gosh. a meme. <laughs> yeah, and how she had like a she had a really good attitude about it. She called it Facegate. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love her. Have you guys spoken about your like weird internet celebra celebrity that has happened? It is really funny because I definitely remember that night and right after we got off the stage she like came up to me and was like could you hear what David was saying because I it was so loud I had no idea what he was saying <laughs> and so while maybe there were other things going on and it was certainly kind of an exaggerated <laughs> response I guess um, but I think she genuinely like couldn't hear what was going on and everybody was cheering and freaking out because his speech was beautiful <laughs> and I think she was just very confused but I'm every interaction that I've had with her has been so positive she's so good and talented and yeah. and down to earth so yeah, yeah. I, I love her a lot I really admire her that's awesome um, also now that you have this kind of large uh, social media platform to like speak about your thoughts mm -hmm. um, because of uh, the whole cultural phenomenon of Stranger Things and Barb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what, how, what, is it important for you to like, uh, do you think now about what you want to say to the world because you've kind of got people's ear now? Absolutely. No, I, I mean, I think I never expected to have a platform ever, much less at this age and one so big. Um, but I do think that if I like looked back on my life and all I did was act and never actively tried to to be a help to anyone or to to bring some light to the world I would be really disappointed with myself um, so I do feel like y there is kind of a responsibility if you have a platform to do something good um, and I am very much an open book about myself I don't have anything that I'm afraid to talk about so I I love being honest and I think people seem to appreciate it. Yeah. And is there anything you're passionate about right now that you're... Yeah. I mean, I think my main cause for sure is definitely mental health mm -hmm. um, and talking about mental illness and sort of erasing the stigma around it mm -hmm. um, because there still is one and, you know, people who are who are struggling and who have different ba brain chemistries are, are called crazy and are you know, looked down on, and that's really not okay. And it, it hurts me a lot to think of the way that mentally ill people are very often isolated mm. um, from society. So it's really important to me that I can talk about that and kind of make it seem like less scary um, than it is, you know? Yeah, I think it's important, you know, that kids now, since they spend so much time in front of a computer, you know, that kind of outcast feeling could be really amplified. Absolutely. And it's, it's good to hear that somebody's like reaching out and saying, 
you know, like you can you can go out there and don't worry about it, like being an outcast because it's actually celebrated in many parts of the <laughs> no, country. No, absolutely. Including Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think I wouldn't be here if I were less of a weirdo than I am, so it's <laughs> kind of great. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so we have like a quick uh, rapid fire question round okay. called first, best, last, worst. I'm scared, but okay. Uh, yeah. You'll be <laughs> fine. Um, this, this is going to be a really obvious one. Yep. First acting job that made you think, I've made it. Stranger Things. Oh, wow. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Uh, best story you have from the set of Stranger Things. Ooh, wow. Um, I guess this is kind of a common practice when you're all done with all of your scenes for a project, everybody will clap for you, um, which is really sweet and wonderful. But I didn't know that was a thing. And so I remember like the end of my shoot when I had finished that long day of doing like the upside down scenes, everybody like clapped for me and I like just sort of cried oh. <laughs> inwardly. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the most magical thing in the entire world. Um, and it still is. I remember thinking, like, wow, this is real, and I can really do this. And, yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that, for That's sure. so cute. Um, okay, uh, weirdest place you've been recognized? Um, in the bathroom of a casino. <laughs> I don't gamble. It was for a thing. And it was, yeah, I just remember, like, coming out to wash my hands and this girl just, like, staring at me like I was a ghost. And, yeah. <laughs> um, worst audition experience? Hmm. I remember one of, like, my very first auditions. Actually, maybe I'll talk about a different one. <laughs> okay. No, I'll talk about this one. Um, yeah, I had to, like play a cheerleader type character and they wanted me to do like a cheerleading cheer uh -huh. and I am just not good at being that like super peppy like like I, I don't know I'm not a cheerleader is what I'm trying to say <laughs> and it went horribly wrong I like to think that like if I did it now maybe I would have a better handle on it but it was not my crowning moment <laughs> um, okay, so I have one more question for you before I let you go. Yeah. Um, if you could sit next to anybody at the Emmys on oh Emmys night, who would it be? Besides your plus one, of course. Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, so many good and talented people. Uh, like, I don't even know if Meryl Streep would be there because she's not <laughs> on TV right now. <laughs> but if she was, I mean, I would. this is a fantasy situation, so yeah. Yes, I would love to sit next to Meryl Streep. I would love to just like sit at her feet and listen to everything she has to say. <laughs> yeah, I think I think at some point you're gonna meet her. That would be incredible. That'd be <laughs> absolutely incredible. Shannon Purser, thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thank you. And we will see you on Emmy night. Yes, it's gonna be great. So excited. <laughs> Bye.